It's time for the Drugless Doctor. Call our friend or family member now and let them benefit from today's exciting and life-changing program. If you want to lead a healthier life, the time is now. Hello, this is Dr. Bob, Anthony, and Kason Maria with another half hour of health for each and every one of you. And tonight we're going to talk about a topic that impacts 70%, 69.3% of you that are watching us right now. It happens to be weight loss. And this is a very popular topic anytime during the year. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about myself personally. Uh, a couple years ago, I did a program because, just because of the fact that I was putting on additional weight. And it's not hard to put on weight today in our society. Um, I'm, I only really eat healthy food, but I was eating too much healthy food. And as you get older, and I'm going to be 60 years old, it's a little bit more challenging to lose weight because you have less muscle to burn calories. So I made a couple decisions that I want to pass on to you, and then we're going to go into more detail of what you could do yourselves at home. Basically what I did is I became conscious or aware of what I was eating. So I was eating too many almonds. Oh, Dr. Bob, but almonds are good for you. I'm not saying almonds aren't good for you, but I was eating too many almonds. I was actually eating too many nuts, period. So I basically have eliminated nuts from my life. I will eat a few walnuts right now. I eliminated olives. Well, olives are good for you, but I was eating too many olives. I was eating too many healthy pretzels. I was making a sandwich with organic um, spelt bread, with uh, organic turkey, with organic everything, but there was too many calories, too many salad dressings, or too much salad dressing. You know, salad dressing has a lot of calories in it. So I have limited the amount of salad dressing that I've used. Just by making those couple lifestyle changes, I eliminated 800 calories a day from my life. So I'm gonna encourage you right now, all of you know what you're doing. I just watched a, a program the other day that this lady lost an enormous amount of weight and she said she was just eating too much. So not to be silly, stop it. <laughs> stop it. And you say, stop what? Stop eating so much. And so what I did is I just made that decision and I exercise. I rollerblade, I ride my bicycle, I jog, I lift weights. And the reason I do that, it helps burn the extra calories. I don't drink alcohol, I don't um, drink soda pop, I don't eat ice cream, and I just have been aware of the calories that I'm putting in my body. So there's nothing else that you learn from me from this program today is look at what you're eating and how many calories. You'll be shocked at the number of calories that are in some of the products that you're consuming. Dr. Anthony, Dr. Kaysen. So what's really important is the why behind the weight loss. As Dr. Bob mentioned, it's a CDC, which is a Center for Disease Control, estimates that about 69.2% of adults over the age of 20 are either overweight or obese. There's also other research studies out there that are showing that obesity and being overweight is a larger issue than hunger in the world right now, which is a really scary fact. So one of the reasons why behind weight loss is by losing the weight, it's gonna impact your physiology. You're gonna have improved energy. It's gonna impact your heart, your muscles, your lungs, your digestion. It's all gonna be impacted when you work on losing some of the pounds. So for every pound of fat that you have, your heart has to pump extra blood through 200 miles of blood vessels in that fat. So that puts stress on your heart over time. So imagine if you're 10, 20, 30, 50 pounds overweight, that's a lot of extra miles that your heart is having to push blood through in your body. So by losing weight, not only does it improve cardiovascular health, but it improves lung health and joint health. A lot of times when we're working with individuals in the office, we're working on their alignment and the, how their nervous system is working but one of the things that could go wrong over time is when your pelvis could be shifted, it could cause some challenges in your knees. One of the things that we find with knees and ankles over time, when they're in the right position, it take, alleviates that stress and pressure, but people that are overweight, it puts extra stress and pressure on your joints as well. So a lot of people that we have experienced in the office could have knee and ankle challenges because of the extra pounds that they're carrying. So 
by losing some weight, it has the ability to impact your overall health and well-being for years in come. So we're not just saying, you know, just to do this for a week, but we really want you to consider these changes that we're recommending to you for an entire lifetime. These are what we would call lifestyle changes that'll last a lifetime. What do we have for me there, Dr. C? So it's all about lifestyle changes. A lot of people, like Dr. Rob was saying, they know what to do, they know what they might be eating, they just don't do it. So it's all about creating these healthy habits, not just for yourself, but it could be in your family so that you're creating these lifestyle changes. So this might mean increasing your water, changing the foods that are in your fridge and in your cupboards, exercising more. It's all about planning ahead of time so that you're setting yourself up for success because the minute you're hungry and you don't have anything prepared or healthy in the fridge, you're more likely to be driving through the fast food line or other you know, vending machines, places at work, just to grab those quick calories, which are also just working on increasing that fat in your body. So things that you can do are just easy right now, looking at how much water you're drinking right now. Half of your body weight in, in ounces you should be consuming a day. Over, our bodies are over 85% water. So just one thing, increasing your water right now is going to help to make you feel fuller, but also it's going to start on working to detoxify your body. So that's just one easy thing that you can do. Dr. Anthony, other tips? Well, I know that one of the things that we've been able to do the last two years in our office is some weight loss programs, and they've been really impactful for people that have been coming to see us. And we started all that because, like Dr. Bob had said at the beginning, he was putting on some extra weight. So we made it a fun activity in the office to do weight loss programs. So last year we did a program in the office, and it was so successful that the average weight loss of everybody that was in the program was 15 and a half pounds. But one of the very cool things that we did with them was a blood test called an HA1C. And many of you at home right now may be sitting there, I have no idea what an HA1C is. But it simply put is the amount of sugar that your red blood cell collects over its lifespan, which is between a 90 and 120 days. So what we were finding with those individuals when they took a beginning HA1C when they started the program and an ending HA1C is that the amount of sugar that was present in their blood went down and why that is important is statistically their chances of getting something like cardiovascular disease which is the number one killer in the world today and diabetes goes significantly down when the HA1C drops so not only just like I was mentioning before can it impact your energy and your heart and your lungs, but it has the ability to stop those lifestyle related diseases. So that was just one of the programs we've done and I know that we'll continue to do in office weight loss programs. What was really exciting is we were able to get all that information, collect the data, and we were able to write up a research article and submit it to a scientific journal. And this is no small deal. As chiropractors, we're focused on the body's ability to heal itself. And there had been no time in history that there had been a weight loss study on this magnitude ever done by chiropractors. So we got that submitted to a journal and it'll be published in that journal sometime this year. And that's in the Journal of Complementary Medicine and Clinical Practice. So what we do works and following what we say with these suggestions and our program of weight loss that people get results that they want so that it can have a wonderful long-term lasting effect on their overall health and well-being. So I know that throughout the rest of the program what our main goal and focus is for you is to get some of these simple solutions and nuggets that you can apply in your own life. A lot of times when it comes to weight loss and lifestyle changes people get really worked up. They'll go to the pantry and they're going to throw everything away. And one of the things that happens is your mate or whoever you're with is going to get upset with you because of all the changes. So you have to have somebody that's ready and willing to partner with you in order to make the changes that we're saying. And one of the things is, is to start small. Small changes every day over a long period of time result in a large change. That's a principle, that's a Japanese principle called Kaizen. It's always about continual improvement. And when it comes to weight loss, some of these simple solutions will make all the difference for each and every single one of you guys.
So what you do right now is you go to our website, which is druglessdoctorsdrs.com. Go to the blog, print the notes out, and just follow along. Go back. This will be posted on the Internet. You can do some research. Go to our, our channel on YouTube and just type in Dr. Bob Weight Loss, Dr. Anthony Weight Loss. We will show up there. So do you want to start with some of the solutions? Sure, so the first thing, if you're following along with the notes at home, number one is developing a routine. So developing a routine means figuring out each week what you're gonna do for exercise, for food planning, and for even for your water. So the best thing you can do is sit down and plan it out. So if you know that you need to exercise, you know, start with something small like being committed to at least three times a week exercising. If you're not exercising right now, three times a week is better than what you're doing right now. So writing down how many minutes you're gonna exercise and what you're gonna do and start by being accountable for that. So this might mean exercising in the morning with your spouse and starting just small. So you might be up to maybe just biking or walking. Maybe you have some resistance bands or weights at home. You just wanna start exercising right now. Everyone always says, but where do you find the time to exercise? This may mean waking up a half an hour early or an hour earlier to start your day out right, but I can guarantee that once you start exercising, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna increase your energy, and you're gonna start burning those extra calories for weight loss. So that's one simple thing you can start doing. And the next thing is starting to plan out your food. And Dr. Anthony, do you wanna share with everyone what we do on Sundays? So one of the things that's important about our Sunday routine is we're preparing food for our entire week. During the week, we're at the office sometimes 12 and 13 hours during the day for multiple days during the week. So if we didn't plan accordingly ahead of time, we wouldn't have the food necessary that we would need for our body to regenerate itself on the inside. So we, we put time aside on a Sunday in order to prepare breakfast, lunch, and dinner for our entire week. And just as Dr. Kaysen was talking about before, if you don't do something like that, you're gonna be more likely to go to a fast food joint, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And you, everybody knows that going to McDonald's is not healthy for you, but they still do it. So planning ahead of time, so that you don't have to go to a place like that. So by, by preparing whether it's salads or protein for dinner or vegetables ready for us to go so that we have those opportunities to have either cut up vegetables and snacks when we're hungry so that we can be putting in the right stuff in our body. So having that plan ahead of time when it comes to food will make all the difference in the world for you. I can tell you, you can go to um, the internet and go to YouTube and type in my name, Dr. Bob DeMaria, snack food, and or my name, and write and type in swap bag. I'll show you some of the items that I personally have used. You can also go to the internet and type in my name, and we have recipes where it's sauteed broccoli and butternut squash and some other items that I know will make your life a little bit easier. You want fresh recipes, type in our names, go to our website, which is druglessdoctors.com to get more information. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back. Hello, this is Dr. Bob DeMaria, and welcome once again to our Half Off Health program. Optimal University is based on Dr. Bob's Guide to Optimal Health, and I'd encourage you to go to my website, druglessdoctor.com, purchase this book, follow us every month. We have live interaction. We're working very diligently to create a culture of wellness for the year, and you can plug this in anytime. Well, today I want to talk to you a little bit about water. You know, water is very important. It helps purify cells, help improve the integrity of your skin. Well, vegetables are an excellent source of water, probably one of my favorites, and I eat all four of these every day in either a salad or in a Dr. Bob's swap bag, is the cucumber. The cucumber is loaded with water, and so are these other items, celery, radishes, cauliflower. Use a little bit of imagination 
add vegetables to your life, I know it will make a very significant difference. Now, let's get back to the whole subject of, of weight loss and what we talked about that very first segment. Over time, you can lose weight. You can lose at least two pounds every week. And as we talked about before the break, you need to have a plan, just like Dr. Kaysen talked about. You want to exercise on a regular basis. I exercise every day. She said something very interesting. She said, if you don't have time to exercise, get up earlier. Well, I want you to know, 30 years ago, I made the decision to exercise. I was waking up at 10 to 7 in the morning. So some of you think, man, you're getting up when I get up. Well, right now, I want you to know that I get up at 10 minutes to 5 o'clock in the morning. You say, what do you do that for? Because I am doing everything I can to keep the, my spirit man alive. My wife and I read our, our Bible. I would encourage you to get a book like Dr. Bob's Guide to Optimal Health, which is a, a devotional. And we improve our, our spirit walk. We pray with each other. And then we exercise around 6 o'clock in the morning. The secret weapon to long-term weight loss is exercise. Isn't that interesting? Adding a little bit of exercise will make a huge difference. I promise you that. So when it comes to weight loss, one of the things that is important is planning ahead of time for get-togethers and parties. One of the things that I hear on an often basis when going over a diet sheet with somebody was, oh, this is a bad week. This is a bad weekend. It always seems like it's a bad week or a bad weekend. One of the reasons why is there's always get-togethers and there's always parties. So being prepared ahead of time, whether you're bringing your own food with you or identifying the things that you know that you're going to consume so that you don't have to put yourself in a circumstance of saying, you know what, I'm okay with maybe one piece of cake. Well, you know, I had one while I just have two. Oh, there's a couple of cookies over there. I might consume those too. So that when you have a, a party or a get together that could sometimes be between 500 and extra thousand calories worth of food that you wouldn't have consumed had you had not done that so there's always going to be a birthday party whether it's your grandma's cousin's brother that you're invited to to go have some peach cobbler with we'd encourage you to know ahead of time what your answer is to the questions when it comes to sweets that are available and other things that you know aren't going to contribute to your overall health and well-being when it comes to weight loss. And also it's becoming label savvy. So like in previous segments we've talked about reading labels and when you flip over a package it's going to say ingredients but now what we're finding is there's a paragraph of ingredients and then it says other ingredients. And if there's something on there that you can't pronounce or um, you know, it's ending in OSE, it could be malodextrin, sucralose, high fructose corn syrup, um, sodium benzoate, all these other additives. You can easily do a Google search just to look on that and see what exactly it's doing to your body. But a lot of times this could be inhibiting your overall weight loss because you're causing your liver to work overtime. So we're just excited to be here and following along with this outline is going to help you with tips that you can actually start doing today and planning ahead of time for your next week and you could actually lose two pounds a week by just implementing the exercise, the food, and the water into your life. I know that we had talked about counting calories as one of the um, solutions to this. And I'm going to just throw a concept out to you that I learned some time ago. It's called the halo effect. So Dr. Anthony talked about if you're going to go to a, a fast food place or a franchise, I want you to have an awareness of the calories. The halo effect is this. People who leave Subway, and I know that a lot of you eat Subway, they think that they eat 27% less calories than what they actually do. And I mentioned at the first segment about salad dressing. I need you to be aware of what you're putting on that Subway. I know that there's that one gentleman that lost an enormous amount of weight, and I have to congratulate him. But for the rank and file of you that are watching us right now, be aware when you go to Subway exactly what you're putting in the body. The people that go to McDonald's actually eat 19% more calories than that they actually realize. So what Dr. Anthony and Dr. Case was also saying, when it comes to calories, there's enormous calories when it comes to going out. I'm going to tell you a little story. Years ago, I was taping TV in California, 
and we are gone for three or four days and usually Debbie and I will take some food to eat along the way. Well, it's the last day, we're on our way home and we are hungry. So we went to a Chinese restaurant and I was doing really good with watching my, my weight. In California, you have to have the calories written down by the food. So I was looking at the rice and they had steamed rice and they had fried rice. And I thought, oh, you know, you're doing really good. So I had broccoli and beef and I made the decision to have the fried rice. When we were sitting down, my wife gave me a look when I ordered it, and I was looking at the calories. Well, steamed rice was 150 calories, which I did not buy, by the way, and the fried rice was 750 calories. That's a lot of calories, so be aware of that if you make that decision to go out to eat. I don't eat too much chicken fried rice anymore. <laughs> well, that's for good reason, too. <laughs> so uh, one of the things when it comes to exercise, and Dr. Bob was talking about your secret weapon being exer exercise, is to have fun when you're doing it. So well, you want to do some sort of exercise that you consider fun for yourself, whether that's doing something like playing racquetball or going for a bike ride or going for a walk with the dog. Doing something that you're going to have fun with on a regular basis is going to make all the difference in the world for you. There was a study that was done that found that people that make exercise fun are 69% more likely to do that sort of exercise on a regular basis. So one of the things that we would encourage you, just like I just said, identify something that you feel is fun when it comes to exercise and do that on a regular basis because let me tell you if you don't think it's fun more than likely the statistical chances of you continuing that for a lifetime is slim to none so identifying that making it fun for yourself is going to make a huge world of difference for you and your weight loss regime the next thing is having a positive mental attitude. So a lot of times when weight loss is talked about, people think they can't do it. Or just because my mom or my sister or my grandma, they're overweight and you know it, it's a genetic pattern and I'm just, you're stuck in that box of thinking that because it's a, you know, the family history of diabetes and high cholesterol and high blood pressure, then that means that you're gonna have it. So being able to figure out t how you talk to yourself throughout the day. So a lot of people, they have negative self-talk to themselves, worse than they would ever allow someone else to talk to them. So working on, it might mean changing your social circle of who you're hanging around. Could be maybe the TV shows that you're watching or things that you're reading, but it's really important to start putting those positive influences in your life and start hanging around people that are healthy and are exercising and are just in that lifestyle of being different than what you may already think that you know, you're, I guess, doomed to have. So you can do anything you wanna do with weight loss. It's just about doing it. You know, when you go grocery shopping, just because you go to a health food store doesn't mean everything in the health food store is healthy. You're going to want to look at the calories. There's a lot of sugar in health food stores. And Dr. Kaysen made an interesting point with watching who you go out with. Well, we had one practice member that every day he went to a particular franchise restaurant every day. And when I made the suggestion that he should change his diet, he was taken back. Like, what am I going to do with all of my friends at this restaurant? And it was time for him to get new friends. And he made that decision and he lost weight and probably found some new friends also. And it was really interesting what Dr. Bob was alluding to, something that I like to joke around is either the whole foods effect or the health food effect. And I have a lot of people that say, I was like, you know, I went to the health food store and I got some organic ice cream and man, was it good. <laughs> and I'll say, well, just because you got it at that location doesn't mean that it's any better for you or the, you know, well, I had some organic chocolate, you know, or I had some, some organic sweet. So just because it says organic and it's a sweet, whether it's a chocolate bar, a cookie,